The West Siberian Documentary Film Studios present the Institute of Nuclear Physics for Fantasy Fair. Our meeting here at the control panel of the Institute's particle accelerator differs only in time and place from the gatherings of the School of Athens. The topic of discussion, the fundamentals of the universe, is no less appealing today than it was 25 centuries ago. The efforts of scientists probing ever deeper into the fine structure of matter, have merged into a science of sciences, the physics of elementary particles. There is hardly any analogy in the ordinary world of our experience to what happens inside an accelerator. Electrons and positrons traveling at the velocity of light collide head-on. This gives rise to particles of strangeness, charm and beauty. Strangeness, charm. It's no mere chance that physicists give the properties of the particles such poetic names. Nature likes to reveal its secrets to dreamers and artists, people capable of making brilliant discoveries proceeding from simple considerations. The famous round table of the Scientific Council of the Institute of Nuclear Physics of the Siberian Division of the USSR Academy of Sciences. These people rank among the leading scientists engaged in high energy research work, acceleration techniques, and plasma physics. Dr. Skrinsky, the director of the Institute, a member of the USSR Academy of Sciences. Corresponding members, Sidorov, Barkov, Dimov. However, high posts and honorary titles are not decisive factors at this round table or at the Institute in general. What counts most here are outstanding work, new ideas, and tenacity in scientific research. The creative atmosphere and general style of the Institute's everyday work bear the imprint of the daring and versatile talent of its founder, Andrei Budker. The VEP-1, the firstborn of Budker's colliding beam method. For developing this method, Budker and his colleagues were awarded the Lenin Prize. Experiments with colliding beams ushered in a new era for particle physicists around the world. They led to practically all the outstanding discoveries made in high energy physics in the past 10 years. An electron and a positron have just collided inside the accelerator. The result of their interaction is duly registered by its detectors.
thousands of signals carrying information on the type of the newly born particles and their energies are sent along cable lines to the control panel recorder. In a matter of seconds, the computer turns out a schematic representation of the event. Studies of colliding electron-positron beams brought to light a surprising range of such events in which matter collides with antimatter. This small VEP-2M colliding beam machine, a mere six meters in diameter, has served for experiments that would need an accelerator about 100 kilometers long in the case of a fixed target arrangement. The VEP-4 machine of the Institute is one more step into the realm of ever higher energies. The higher the energy, the finer the discernible structure of the microcosmos, and unfortunately, the greater the size of the accelerator needed. Inside the VEP-4 storage ring, 360 meters in perimeter, electrons and positrons are accelerated to energies of seven billion electron volts. The NAP machine also deals with two beams, one of light electrons and the other of massive protons. Here, however, they travel in the same direction with the same velocity instead of meeting head on. On colliding with electrons, protons lose part of their energy or in other words, are cool. The method of electron cooling proposed by Budker was first put to use at Dr. Dikonsky's laboratory. Research here paved the way to proton-antiproton -proton colliding beam accelerators. Records of all the experiment are stored in the computer magnetic archives. Their decoding and processing is unthinkable without the use of high-speed computers of large storage capacity. It takes several months to carry out an accelerator experiment. Millions of events are recorded on magnetic tapes. Thousands of detectors monitor its operation. This calls, of course, for extensive automatic control and the wide use of computers. All the large installations of the Institute are provided with computer-aided control. Scientists have always been inclined to believe in the unity of all the forces of nature. A recent theory has succeeded in encompassing the electromagnetic and weak interactions, two of the four fundamental physical interactions. The validity of the theory has been supported by research performed at the Institute by Barkov, Kriplovich, and Zolotarov. The experiment was conducted by atomic spectroscopy methods with the aid of a powerful laser. This highly sophisticated experiment revealed for the first time a slight effect of the non-conservation of parity in atomic transitions, an effect peculiar only to weak interactions. The effect of the non-conservation of parity shows there is no strict plane symmetry of all phenomena, a most surprising property of nature.
A seminar of the Institute's theoreticians. The theoreticians at the Institute of Nuclear Physics are engaged in studies of general problems of the quantum field theory, the basis of theoretical descriptions of the elementary particles. The work of the theoreticians is closely linked with the experiments undertaken by the Institute. Many of the experiments have yielded fascinating results. It is hoped a particle of the sun will soon be reproduced on Earth. Research in controlled nuclear fusion is conducted at the Institute with open-type magnetic traps suggested by Boudker. The Go-1 plant, one of the installations used for confining a hydrogen plasma at a temperature of a million degrees. The plasma is heated by relativistic electron beams. A series of novel water-insulated accelerators has been developed for this purpose. One of them is the Aquagen accelerator. These accelerators have won a national prize. The Institute's research workers Loganov and Fyodorov are among the prize winners. Electric and magnetic fields rotate the plasma inside the PSP2 installation. This motion is an additional effective means of plasma confinement. A modification of the open type systems, the Ambal plant, is in the process of assembly. The ambipolar electric field set up inside this installation holds the plasma within the central solenoid. The plasma has to be caught and kept reliably in the trap to attain a temperature of a million degrees and take the fusion reaction beyond the break-even point. Work in this direction is conducted at the Institute under the guidance of Dr. Ryuto, a corresponding member of the Academy. The scientists are convinced the results of these studies will give mankind an inexhaustible new source of energy. The synchrotron radiation is emitted by electrons circulating in the storage ring. These rays have opened up unheard of possibilities. The Institute has developed many special channels of synchrotron radiation covering a wide range of the spectrum. This radiation can be used instead of that of many other sources and is of a much higher order of intensity. The synchrotron radiation can be used, for instance, in manufacturing integrated circuits 
with a layout density of the circuit components 100 times higher than is usual. The Institute of Nuclear Physics has become the main Soviet research center to make use of the synchrotron radiation. Proportional chambers used for research in high energy physics have proved to be eminently suitable for X-ray structural analysis. They serve for rapidly measuring the distribution of the radiation intensity along one or two coordinates. Instruments of this type open up new vistas in molecular biology and medicine. An accelerator is used for the disinsectization of a grain elevator of the Odessa seaport. One of the many industrial accelerators produced by the Institute of Nuclear Physics. Radiation processing is a quick and highly efficient means of ridding grain of pests without, in the least, affecting its food quality. The heat resistance of polyethylene insulated cables is greatly improved by passing them through the beam of an accelerator. The national economy makes use of over 60 industrial accelerators turned out by the Institute. Ninety percent of its experimental research equipment is made by the Institute. The Institute's design office deals with the most sophisticated electrophysical equipment. The designers cooperate closely with the experimenters so as to shorten the designing stage as much as possible. The Institute's experimental production facility is well organized on a large scale and has at its disposal a wide range of technological equipment, often of unique design. This makes it possible to manufacture up-to-date physical installations, specifically particle accelerators, which combine kilometer-long dimensions with micrometer accuracy. the very first components of an accelerator of the future, a fantastic machine coming into being at the Institute. And possibly, the whirlwind of particles within the accelerator is a distant and vague image of the microcosmos, a cosmos where one of the most wonderful miracles of the universe, nature in the guise of man, will begin to comprehend itself. and direction, Svetlana Barkhatova, photography, Yuri Marinki, commissioned by the Institute of Nuclear Physics of the USSR Academy of Sciences. <laughs>